Oh, yesterday we had a crazy day, but we did get the front wheel off the bike and get it downstairs where it's nice and warm to work on. And painting the wheels is such a big part of any customized bike. To me, it just makes perfect sense to do it in the winter and take your time. And out on our videos, we have of the coming up on 1400 very soon. We have, uh, there's probably a hundred of them that deal with painting and restoring these wheels. But each one is unique, each one is different. And as I, uh, I correctly say many times, at the end of a restoration, they become, like for me, they become my children. Each one of these wheels, of course, is on our videos, and each one of them, uh, at some point in time, they complement the looks of the bike. They make it a little more custom, and in my case, uh, it's one of the things I enjoy doing. I think this is just an upgrade that's worth doing, and we do it in the winter when time is not of the essence. In fact, we do all this work like, like the Italians do, as if time doesn't exist. It's a famous Italian saying that they build, they do things, artwork or whatever, as if time didn't exist. So as soon as I chop the ice, it'll be time. And once we get down the cellar, of course, the coffee is already brewing. There's the main switch of all. And we'll make it extra strong today. So yesterday I got the discs off, got them cleaned up, Polished up the bolts. That part is in the bank now. Now we can move on to working on a wheel. Now because the weather's been so cold, I haven't been in a real rush to put any of these parts back on the bike. I, what I've been trying to do, the coward that I am, is spend as much time in the cellar as I can where the heat is on and the coffee's warm. That's what being a coward is all about. So I have to check with Karen about the master plan for the day. Now I had thought of a couple of things here that I may or may not try to do as a little experiment. Since this wheel is going to require so much heavy grinding here and heavy sanding and, and I've got to scuff up all the parts that are polished already and I wanted to grind away some of these these high spots. Just wanted this to look a little nicer. So I wanted to get in here even though you really don't see that that much. I just want that to be, well, just a little bit nicer than, a little bit, a lot nicer than a stock wheel. I'm willing to pay the, the, the price and time and energy and effort and, of course, the material, the money to paint. But the biggest thing, of course, is the effort. And this is truly a labor of love from this point on. Now, I know once I take the tire off, what's going to happen, the, the wheel is going to get harder to handle. It's a little bit easier to handle because of the weight while I'm doing grinding and whatnot on those spokes. So the first thing I want to address are these spokes. And I'm going to have to do a little experimenting on that. There's a lot of ways to do it, of course, and, and a lot of it's got to be done by hand, but I want to see how much I can get done with the sander. A lot of mandrels for polishing, but here's the one I was looking for. This is a Harbor Freight thing, and it's got removable um, the little pads. I guess the first test and see how this is going to work and it's it's relatively uh, low impact because a lot of this is remember a lot of this has got to be done by hand so the first thing is to do just a little bit of a test on this and see if this is going to clean right up or if, or if it's going to be more than I think it is Now let me let me show this. I want to do this without a camera cut. Now if we were polishing the wheel, this would be the way to go because this is really rough and it's also got a coating of some kind of epoxy or clear or something that I can I know it's on there. So what I'm going to have to do is get a a, a, a heavier grinder to get rid of some of these heavy things first 
But I, I really wanted to do that test and just see how much it's going to be, uh, well, probably 15 minutes of spoke or something. And I have plenty of these pads. And by the way, I wanted to walk over here and just show these pads. I'm trying to do this without a camera cut because a lot of people like to see how long do these things take. Now, if this didn't work as well as it did, and of course we'll try some of these other things, but there's going to be some time when you want to get in corners and angles and... That's what we're going to try to show on this video. And this may go over the course of several days, I don't know. I'm not using the same mandrel. I've got some 180, 180 discs. They're really sandpaper. Again, Harbor Freight. And what I want to use these for is just to grind down all these Either uh, they're casting numbers or there's some stuff up here I'd like to get rid of. Again, the objective is I need to get this smooth, get rid of all of these rough spots. But the one thing I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to I don't want to make it so smooth that it's like a like this is. Because I'm gonna have to sand this by hand to to get some etch to the paint. But I don't want to have this all rough like this, because what'll happen? I'll fill this all with primer and the, the paint's gonna get real thick and ugly. I want this to be, when I'm done, I want it to be every bit as nice as the parts that we've done uh, already. And it, it just, the only answer here, it's going to be, a, I got to pick the, find the final tools that'll do the job. I'll try to share what I learned along the way, but it's going to, this is just going to be a labor of love. You, this is not a thing you do lightly. Now, obviously you can take the wheel, you don't even have to take the wheel off the bike. I've seen guys... I think they were from Australia, but I'm not sure. And the guy just took a can of uh, like barbecue paint, painted his wheels, and said, "Wow, break this so painted and everything." I don't want to do that. This, I'm on the other end of this. This is this is a labor of love to me, and something that so when it's done will really look great on a bike. I think it will anyway. On a 180 disc, and I've been doing a little bit of sanding by hand here because you can't get around the edges. And by the way, it really looks like it was a good idea leaving that tire on. Otherwise, this wheel just is too light. And if you have a, if you have a helper, of course, it's fine. But now remember, I want to have a little bit of... Let's get that clean. I want to have a little bit of roughness to this because I want that first coat of... We're going to use self-etching primer. I want that really to get a bite on there. I don't. I do not want to have this polished surface. So, but I do want it to be as smooth as possible. And it looks like this is just going to be. Well, I got one done here. I this definitely is going to go across a few days. That's for sure. But once that's done, we are on the road to having a really, really nice looking wheel. What I'm basically doing in the beginning of this job is always just checking what areas I can get with the composite stick. I can get up around here and get this all scratched up and etched up. And there's, there's no other way to do this that I know of other than just to experiment with each one of the things we have. And then the final thing, of course, is always when you're all done with any area, just go over it with some rough sandpaper. Go to that self-etching primer when we do get to prime it. It's going to get a good bite. And I remember doing the R1 wheels. You know, it just took a couple of days of, of, of labor, of love. Now, while I'm taking and trying to grind these out, I'm trying to maintain the shape. Just a, you can't believe they got these all over the place. There's even some up here. But anyway, I want to use the same, the same sander, but be very, very careful. I don't get a big gouge in there. Well, I got just the rough, the rough part of this is starting to come together. And eventually I've got that roughed in, but there's still parts around here. All this is going to have to be done by hand. I can get, well, see, I want to get these casting marks out. But, and this tool is, this has been working pretty good, but again, there's a lot of time involved in this, and you got to be very delicate.
By the way, these discs come in. I've been trying different grits. I got three or four different grits here. And they're all usable, but grinding those those lettering uh, things around the edge, they are really, that's really more work than I thought it would be. And some of the other rims didn't have any of that. Now, because I still have the tire mounted, I'm going to have to be real careful around this, and I don't want to put any scratches in this. <clears throat> Since we already have a good seal on that, it's been in there for many years. <laughs> but once we take the tire off, we'll take that out, and I'll have to back mask this off. Where that rubber O-ring is, I don't want to get any, any, even paint, anything, any scratches at all. Little by little coming together, but boy, it's a lot of, this goes, <laughs> a lot of time goes into this. This, the flapper has proven to be pretty good for getting down in certain areas. Down in here especially. Now this little sanding mandrel comes from Harbor Freight too, and this is great for getting in little tight areas. I got a call from Luciano. He's going to try to stop by with the Resolve. He's going to get some paint. We're going to redo this, and I'll do that on a separate video. This has to be all sanded down and or uh, some primer sealer. I don't know if I have primer sealer. Separate job. We'll do that on a separate video. There wasn't much point in doing the rest of this paint test. So whatever time I have, I don't know what time he's going to be here. What I wanted to show is I took a break from working on this. Of course, I ran out of these little sanding pads, and I ran down a harbor freight, of course. Where else would anybody go? I got some 80 grits, some 120 grits. What else did I get? Oh, and a pack of these. So, oh, under 10 bucks for the whole thing with a coupon and a free flashlight. But what I wanted to mention is, and I think this is totally, totally useful information. If you have a bunch of these sanding tools, and I have the... Uh, the other sander I haven't even used yet. Having various tools, various little end pieces, you kind of, each wheel is a different thing. No two are exactly the same, unless you're doing this, like the back wheel of this bike will be very similar, but each one, all these radiuses, all these little edges, and getting rid of that lettering was a monster job. But now, once Luciano's gone here, I'm gonna take this, I got the smoother sandpaper, this is good for getting in all these little nooks and crannies and around here. But the problem with this is, I found, is this, this tip being soft, a lot of times getting into a radius is difficult. In here, it'll get in. Now, I do, I wanted to do this without a machine running. See how that'll go in there? And I can get in there. And it's what's really important on a wheel is to do, think about a wheel, the valleys, anywhere where if the paint shrinks, it's going to pull up. Now, if you're doing a job, you're going to flip the bike, or you don't care, you're going to get a new bike in two years or something, well, maybe you don't even need to do this. Maybe you could just sand it with 1,000 grit and go paint it. But I can't, because I want that lettering removed, and I'm, I will spend a lot of hours doing this. The end result of everything that I do is I'm going to have the bike for the rest of my life. And... and you never know how long that's going to be, so I really want to do it right. You never know, I could live three, four, five more years. But what I wanted to really make the point of in this wheel is if you have a bucket of these tools, and they're all so inexpensive. This one, by the way, was really handy. Some of these, the real soft ones are nice. Once you get used to using these tools, I have the thing I bought for Vince's wheels here somewhere. Vince, there it is down there. If you buy these tools, you have a bucket of them, and you enjoy doing this kind of work, you find 
Some work on various jobs, some don't work. It's the same thing as my bucket. The bucket with all the polishing stuff, and there's another bucket down there with polishing stuff. And Luciano's job separately. I guess you get the idea that if you enjoy a restoration, there's a lot, a lot of little things you need to tool, but none of them are expensive. Now, as I'm doing this wheel, I see this is very, very handy. This one really was handy. This one, mm, yeah, well, and but you never know until you try it. And it's going to be a time that when I'm all done, I'm going to want to put the smoother grit sandpaper on this. Because this I can do, just go over the whole thing with that at the very end. And then I'll have to flip the wheel and do the other side. You like that look? We can make yeah. like a chopper. Yeah, nice. yeah, look at him. Wow. You know what? How did you do this? That, I let you buy the paint is how oh, I did it. It's a special paint I got for you, right? It's special, yeah, crackle finish. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna crackle your ass. Look at that. If you try to do this kind of thing, you're gonna come out. Now you could fill this one in like paint by numbers. Red. Yeah. We we'll actually saw a bike with that at the at the bike show yeah, one time. Wow. And a guy, a customer probably paid for it. See, it happened on the test too. See, here's the test. Yeah. That, see how you know as soon as you see that, you know you're in trouble. It's strange because the the ZX seven and the and the yellow ZX six, I mix a much of paint. Rosolium. But you get away with it sometimes. Sometimes you go by an alligator and you go, ha, 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 and he doesn't bite you, you know? But this, you got a bit in the ass right now. Yeah. The alligator got you. So what are you going to do? I'll sand this down. I got to prime it with primer sealer. Hmm. I got to go see if I got enough here. Well, we got to get some. Okay, so we do get Luciano left. We had a, uh, we looked at some cafe racer ideas. He's found another seat that he likes. But anyway, we're going to get back to, next thing I'm going to do some more grinding on this. I hope by the end of the day I can finish one side of this, even though there's been a lot of interruptions today. Well, if I get one side done, and boy, does it look nice without that writing on there. All that, I, I hated that. And even though you don't really, when the bike's all put together, discs hide some of it. But you do see enough that when it's nice and glossy, shiny, I just think it looks so nice. The RD, everybody always comments on the wheels, how much they like the wheels on the RD. Now, there's a couple little things about finishing up this side of the wheel. See, one thing really worked in my favor. This side doesn't have anything. So it'll be a lot less work doing this side. But I just got the word from the boss, and the boss always has the final word, that uh, Miles is on his way coming over, so I better finish up what I'm doing. I have about another half an hour here. So what I want to do is just show the techniques that I've come to uh, appreciate. This is one of them. This is 180 grit sandpaper. I fold it over and then I fold it over again. And what this is good for is for getting right in that crack. And it's in that, I say, in the valley. In that valley that you better not leave any oxidation because that's where the paint is prone to pull up. And from having painted a lot of wheels over a lot of years, with a lot of different materials, I know that's... If you do have a problem there, and you put the bike all back together, you put it out in the sun, and right here you get a bubble, you really feel bad about it. Now the other thing is where that... I'm going to do this by hand. I don't want to put the machine in there. Where the valve is, because we still have air in the tire. And by the way, this turned out to be a great thing. I, I, in the past, I haven't left the tire on. But yeah, I had nobody to hold it, so it was doing this for the whole time. Now with the weight of the tire, it just seems like that's a great tip. Something that I'll be I'll be aware of in the future. And I gotta do the back wheel, of course. But anyway, getting into these valleys, critical. Critical, critical stuff. That's where anywhere where the paint, if it shrinks, remember paint is always shrinking. So if it's shrinking, it's gonna want to pull up from the valley. Now, the edge here I'll do, and I'll do it by hand once the tire is removed, but getting in all these little things. And then the final thing, and I'll do that off camera, well, maybe I'll do a little bit on camera with fast forward, is with the pad, go over the whole thing. This is, this is probably the most useful of all the tools, but I like to use this at the very end because it's flat and it'll give me a nice flat surface on all of those surfaces.
So ultimately the day played out very well. We have a resolve on this and we'll work on this on separate videos. There's, there's a lot to learn here. I'm glad I learned a lot from this and we're going to try to pass on whatever it is that we learn and hope that it's of some value to you too. Believe it or not, we have gotten a little gap in the weather where it hasn't been really brutally cold for the last couple of days, so we should be able to get some of the painting done on Luciano's job. And we got one side of the wheel done, and I think uh, we're, we're well on our way to success here. This, this makes such a big difference, having that all cleaned up with all that writing and everything off it. It's going to be a really nice looking wheel when we're done. And it's time for the, be the best part of my day. When Miles comes over, my God, he's seven and a half years old, but I remember when he was that age. I keep pictures in my shop, always to remind me how the blessings I've had in my life. So this was a pretty good day. One side of the wheel is done. One side left to do. If I get the other side done in one session, and what will be ready for the next step, which will be pulling a tire off, doing some final detailing, and the priming and the painting. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. So tell me, tell me what you did. Those are those are little flashlights for the eyes. You um, made a robot. Yeah. And what? This yes. is all card. And what is this? So we can put the money in there. No, just that's a cup. for money. Just a cup. Show me how the arms move. Okay. And How I cool gave is that? Her the birth. And you made a birth certificate. Oh, so tell me about his birth certificate. He, he, he was His born name is Clive. His, he was born today, 2019. His agility, his talent, is carrying things. Um, I, wait, that's his, that's his intelligence. Okay. He's intelligent. Like agility, I, like wheels, we are. and a hook arm. Okay. A hook arm. So he's a hooker. <laughs>